Hi Blade, it's Brittany, aka the Littlest Monkey 77, and do I have some good true stories for you. Okay, so the first story was one that my uncle told me. Um, pretty much everyone, like me and my uncle and my cousins, all love war stories and stuff. And he actually has a friend that was in World War II. And he had the most crazy story ever. It was insane. But, um,. Yeah, so I guess he was behind a trench. It's either that or just a barricade. And um, him and his partner were on the lookout to see if anyone was coming to attack them or anything. And so um, my uncle's friend, he couldn't really see from behind there, so we had to get up and do a quick check. And the second he did, there was a sniper aimed at him, trying to do a headshot and shoot him down, which is so hard to survive because snipers are specially trained for that kind of thing but um he got so lucky actually he turned his head just as the guy shot the bullet and he was just gonna talk to his partner and tell him that there was somebody out there and we gotta start defending ourselves and the second like his mouth was open right as the bullet came so it went right through his mouth out the other side missed all his teeth Missed his jaw, missed everything, and he was perfectly fine. Like, it healed up completely, except for two little scars. And, yeah, it was kind of gross, though. He had, like, a big blood blister coming out the one side, he said. And he just turned to his friend, and they started laughing, because it was just so crazy that he survived that. He was so lucky. And, yeah, then he got, like, four weeks off in the hospital, so... He's a pretty lucky man. <laughs> okay. Story number two. This one involves me. I was in grade nine, about 14, and it was my second year in woodwork, to the sweet class. Um, but yeah, of course lots of accidents happen in woodwork. My teacher actually said that his one friend cut off about four fingers <laughs> when he was um, showing a class what to do, so it's kind of scary. But, um... Yeah, my grandma's a dog breeder, and she always has to clean them up after the dogs and stuff. So I wanted to make her a pooper scooper for, like, a little present. And, um, so you need a stick and a big metal spoon and attach it to the end. So, um, I had to use the drill press to drill through the metal spoon. And, of course, this thing's, like, this big, and... It's really scary and fast and spins around like that. And yeah, and I guess I got distracted when I was using the drill press for a second. And I lifted up the handle a bit by accident. And the spoon is still stuck on, so it's spinning like this super fast. And yeah, and so I'm all freaked out, so I'm like, oh no. And I put up my hands, and it catches my middle finger, the spoon does, and actually slices it down like this, about two and a half inches down. And it was so crazy. I was just freaking out because I thought all I saw was blood. And I thought I lost my finger and it felt like it. So, um, yeah, I walked over to the concrete sink. And I guess I was free I was still freaking out and I passed out. Because I was like, oh my god, my finger's gone. What am I going to do? And when I did, supposedly my hand went like this and I got blood all over my face. So my teacher is so scared because he thinks that I must have hit my head on the sink and like cracked it open. So he calls in like four nurses and everyone's just huddled over me and they're so afraid that I'm like dying or something. But yeah, thankfully it was just my finger but definitely freaked everybody out. Third story is definitely a crazy one. Um, it involves my grandpa and yeah. Um, when I was about two weeks old, I had my baby shower, and, yeah, my grandpa, he had been struggling with lung cancer for a long time, so he came to it, and he got to hold me, and that was a really special moment, that he actually got to see me, and then, um, he actually died later on that night, which is a really crazy coincidence, and then, um, 
yeah. After that, my mom always said she would wake up in the middle of the night and just go and check on me because she would get the weirdest feelings. She would just all of a sudden be freezing and her hairs would stand up and then she just... She knew something was going on and so she always instinctively just went into my room. And this went on for a long time and I guess it stopped for a few years. And when I was about three or four, um, I'd already learned how to talk and it started happening again. And so um, my mom kept on getting the feelings and she would just all of a sudden wake up out of her sleep and be like, oh my god, something's here. And it wasn't a bad feeling or anything, it was just really freaky. <laughs> and so, um, I actually got up one morning, and I went upstairs, and I just told my mom, just matter-of-factly, I'm like, oh, the nice man in white came to visit me again. And she's just like, what? <laughs> and so, um, I explained to her that there was always this really, really nice man who'd just come and stand by my crib and, um, just kind of watch out for me and stuff. And I described him, and she's like, that's exact... She told me this later on when I would understand it. She said I described my grandpa exactly. And she always felt that he would was watching over me. It was just the weirdest feeling. And, um, yeah. So we're all pretty much convinced that my grandpa is my guardian angel, and he was watching over me when I was a kid. So it's a really cool story. Um... And yeah, that's pretty much all my cool stories for now. Well, I hope you guys liked them. See you soon.